guess what? The Pit of Heresy is the dungeon this week, and the final boss encounter is one of the best places to farm for high stat armor because it's literally guaranteed. But wait, you don't have a fire team to play with because they all have real jobs, and even though you've gotten multiple marketable skills and qualifications, no one will hire you even though everyone says the job market is desperate for employees. So you have some time on your hands to get ready for Lightfall, or maybe you just need pinnacles. Well buckle up buttercup, because it feels super cringy doing these voiceovers for YouTube videos, so we're gonna cruise through this fast. Let's start with loadouts. I did two runs for this video, one without any seasonal mods as an arc strider, and one with seasonal mods as a gunslinger. For supers, I used Gathering Storm for Arc, and I would flip-flop back and forth between Deadshot and Blade Barrage for Solar. Now for exotics. On my Arc run, I used the Assassin's Cow the entire run. I had never used this thing until recently, even though I got it back when Shadowkeep came out, and it has quickly become one of my favorite exotics. Basically, when you get a charged melee kill or a finisher, you get health back and go invisible. The invisibility timer is longer if you kill or finish a tougher enemy. With Combination Blow and this helmet, you basically get your entire health back on a single kill and a few seconds of invisibility. As for armor mods, try and get 100 resilience. I know it's getting nerfed in Lightfall, but 40% damage reduction now is awesome and 30% is still very strong if you're watching this post Lightfall. Also. High Energy Fire and Taking Charge are super helpful on those tougher enemies and bosses. I also try to go for 100 Discipline as well, because getting your grenade back quickly is always beneficial. I also ran Double Bombers on my cloak, because you dodge a lot as an Arc Hunter, so you'll get your grenade back even faster. If you're in the last week of Season 19, slap on Solo Operative and Weakened Clear. With my Solar Hunter, I ran Caliban's Hand, and a healing grenade with the Ember of Empyreon to extend my Restoration and Radiant timers with any solar weapon or ability kills. I was still running high energy fire and taking charge. Okay, time to get into the mechanics. Pit of Heresy came out when the most reliable way Bungie could kill players was 1. to overwhelm them with enemies, or 2. push them off a platform. Because of this, the pit has a lot of long drops, narrow bridges, weird geometry, and ogres to push you off everything. So if you're trying to solo flawless this dungeon, the hardest part is most likely going to be the second encounter or the platforming. Fun fact, if you're rocking a sword and you use the block before you hit the ground, it'll dramatically decrease the amount of damage you take. Also, if you're blocking with the Relic Sword the Hive Knights drop, you won't take any fall damage. At this part, you have a few symbols to look for. They are Ice Cream, 6, A, 4, Burger, and Among Us. Usually the best place to drop first is the tower with the A symbol above it. Kill the Knight to open the room, and then kill the larger sword bearer knight to get the relic sword. After you kill the knight, look up in the center of the room and you'll see three symbols on chains. These three symbols are the towers you need to go to to kill a wizard, another knight, and a shrieker. You can only kill these mini bosses with the relic sword. The wizard can only be damaged with heavy attacks and the sword super. The knight can only be killed with light attacks and the sword super. And the shrieker can only be killed by blocking its attacks back at it. Fun fact part 2, if you're wearing the Star Eater scales and have Feast of Light times 4, you will get an overshield when you use the super attack on the sword without losing your Feast of Light stacks. Once your sword runs out, you just kinda have to wander around until another sword bearer knight spawns in. Usually this is on a bridge or by one of the towers. Once you've killed all three of the mini bosses, go to the tower with the pillar of green light, kill the last few enemies, and you're done with the first encounter. Alright, on to encounter one and a half. 
there are three unkillable ogres wandering around these pathways and some tunnels in between where the ogres walk. Shoot the entrance that's right in front of you when you drop down and you'll find a room with a lot of thrall, some acolytes, and a chunky knight. Kill everything in this room. And once the knight is dead, it'll drop a void orb. Pick up the orb and go to the far left and run down the pathway till the end. You'll find a doorway with a spot where you can dunk the orb at. If the ogre is in your way from the first room, you can jump off the side where you see a ghost floating and there's another platform you can run on that the ogre can't see most of. After you dunk the first one, there's a small tunnel you can chill in until the ogre goes away. But when you run out of it, you need to go to the first tunnel entrance you see on your left, and you'll find another knight and a whole lot of thrall. After you clear this room, you need to exit on the opposite side you came in from, and you'll go left down the hallway to dunk at another door. Once again, Run back up the hallway and go into the first tunnel on your left and you'll find the final knight. Grab the orb, exit on the opposite side from where you entered, go left and dunk at the final door to get to the second encounter. All right, on to encounter number two. The name of the game here is Survival. So Assassin's Cow and Combination Blow is what I use for health regen, and Rat King for health regen and more invisibility whenever you get a kill and then reload. I also ran a sniper as my secondary for some of the annoying knights that spawn in the upper balcony areas. For my Solar Hunter, I used a Blinding Grenade Launcher, Sunshot, Ember of Empyreon, and Caliban's Hand for all those sweet, sweet chain explosions. There are a lot of enemies here, so just go nuts with that clear. You have to stand underneath the totem in the middle of the room, because if it touches the ground, you die. If the Curse of Suffering gets to six stacks, I think, you die. But to beat this encounter, you need to dunk six void orbs next to the totem. Whatever class you use, Having an Eager Edge Sword is going to help you a ton during this encounter. There is a rally banner at the middle door area if you need it. To start, just kill the guys in the middle. After you stand at the totem for a little bit and survive, a chunky knight will walk in on the left, middle, or right of the room. You need to go to that platform and kill this knight fast to get the Void Orb. Dunk it in the middle, and then do that five more times. Simple enough. Every time you dunk, it resets the Curse of Suffering debuff, but it spawns a ton of enemies and some boomer knights in the top balcony areas. Just make sure to always step under the totem each time you get back to the middle so you don't accidentally wipe. Once you've dunked all six orbs, congratulations, you're done. Shoot the giant orange zit to pop it and you'll get to the maze. Okay, so this part is what killed a few of my flawless runs because all the spiked logs are really annoying. So just stop at every level or so, but bonus points if you can get all the way to the bottom in one jump. Once you're at the bottom, you'll see three symbols. You'll need to find three wizards at three different platforms, each with one of these symbols above it. These are just tough wizards, so you don't need a relic sword to kill them. Now, it's really easy to get turned around in this part, so if you're not a diehard purist that thinks they need to have every detail of the game memorized, otherwise you're not doing it right, just pull up a map like this on your phone or on another screen to find your way around. For symbols, we've got ice cream, six, round six, weird six, V, and A. Super creative. 
I know. Once you kill the three wizards at the corresponding platforms, it's time to head to the final boss. For all the veteran Destiny players out there, this final boss is just the Doritos Nacho Cheese flavor compared to Crotos Cool Ranch flavor. The mechanics here are a combination of the first and second encounters. You need to kill the Swordbearer Knights to get a Relic Sword, run up to one of the towers to fight either a Knight, Wizard, or Shrieker. Once the miniboss dies, they'll drop a Void Orb, which you then need to dunk at one of the locations around the center boss area. Two tips. There are a lot of enemies around each mini-boss, so I usually clear them out first before grabbing a sword and fighting the mini-boss. And two, if the boss is standing right in front of a dunk location, dunk the orb somewhere else. This boss might not be the hardest boss fight, but it does do a surprising amount of damage. One of his attacks sends fire in a line across the ground, and if you stand in it for more than two or three seconds, you will die doesn't matter how much health or overshields you have. Remember that when you fight the mini bosses, the knight can only be damaged with light attacks and the sword super, the wizard can only be damaged with heavy attacks and the sword super, and the shrieker can only be killed by blocking its attacks back at it. Once you dunk the final orb, you get about 45 seconds to deal damage to the boss. You have to be in the green circle arena to damage him, and I highly recommend using some distance weapons, so you can dance back and forth to avoid his attacks. Even with overshields and the lament healing you, this boss can melt you with its fire. Wither Horde is also super good to get damage in even when you're not firing at him and avoiding his attacks. It's even better if it's season 19 and you're running weak and clear. Cursed Thralls spawn in every 10 or so seconds, so watch out for those. When the boss slams his sword into the ground, you have about 7 seconds to get out of the boss arena with the green floor, or you will die. Unless of course you're a better player than me, and you can one phase this guy, I usually take about 2 phases. So just repeat the process of killing knights to get relic swords, kill the mini bosses, dunk the orbs, and then dump an unspeakable amount of damage into the final boss. And there you go! You've successfully soloed the dungeon. If it's your first time running this solo, don't be upset if you can't flawless it. Run it a few times to experiment with loadouts and tactics before you actually go for a flawless run. And once you're a little more familiar with this place, it shouldn't take more than 30 to maybe 40 minutes to solo it. Anyways, I hope this guide helps you, and I'll be posting more playthroughs and guides roughly every week. So subscribe to stay updated on those. Toodles!